We are here at the Munich Security Conference and I'm here with Ilva Johansson. Do you want to tell me a little bit more about the security topic of young girls and women? What is the European Union trying to do that more women or even girls feel more safe? Yes, I really would like to talk about this because it's one of my top priority. And let me start with uh, child sexual abuse. Uh, we are failing today to protect children. Uh, the the uh, Council of Europe estimates that one child out of five is a victim of sexual abuse. Last year there were reported 30 million reports of child sexual abuse online where uh, perpetrators share their rapes online but also meet other victims online and, and threaten young people to do sexual things with themselves or with the siblings or even meet uh, in, in real life and to meet, commit uh, this terrible crime. And I must say that we have done t absolutely too little here. And, and just to give you one example, we have an e-privacy directive in European Union that says that companies are obliged to scan communication to find copyright infringement. So, but I would like to stand yeah. for child sexual abuse. We really need mm -hmm. to make it mandatory to yeah. do that. And I would like to set up a European center for the victims of child sexual abuse, but also how to prevent and to, uh, to work with the internet companies. So this is one example. Uh, of course, it's not only girls, but it's actually mainly girls. Another problem that is in my portfolio is trafficking. Half of the victims of trafficking in the European Union are European citizens. They're being trafficked inside the European Union. We had a recent case with Romanian uh, young women that were trafficked to Spain and the, the trafficker actually tattooed the girls to show who, who they, uh, they belong to. And we are not protecting these young women uh, well enough. So this is really an area where we have to do so much more and I'm so tired of these crimes that are mostly hit uh, ch girls and young women and children in general are being so low prioritized very often we need better regulation and it would be to need to be much tougher and what do you want the platforms to change like how can this online environment be more safe for young girls and children yeah one thing i would like to make it mandatory with safety by design so before you launch a new platform or a new service uh, you should make a risk assessment how could this be abused mm -hmm. when it comes to uh, child sexual abuse I would also make it mandatory for them to detect and report and remove. I think this is uh, absolute because if you're a victim, uh, if you've been raped and you see this going on again and again and again and again and again worldwide, you're being uh, re-victimized uh, all the time and it has to be mandatory to take it down and to report it to the police so that we can find these uh, children and rescue them and of course pros prosecute the, the perpetrators. And this is a, such a huge, huge problem. The, the German police cracked down together with Europol to a big ne a pedophile uh, network was called Boys Town. It has 400,000 members. Yeah, that's, that's insane, and um, it, it probably ha also has increased due to the pandemic. Yes, it has. It has increased. It seems, of course, this is what we see with the reports are only the tip of an iceberg, because not all companies are reporting or detecting, yeah. and more and more communication go into end-to-end -end encryption, and that means today they are not scanning into the end-to-end -end encrypted uh, communication. So it's, it, but it's all, uh, everything we can see is that both uh, domestic violence towards women and child sexual abuse are both increased enormously during the pandemic. So you also said it, it's uh, not only an online topic, obviously no. it's also an offline topic in, in the real world. And how do you want to change this situation? How do you want to improve this, that domestic violence won't yeah. happen? On domestic violence, actually this commission, and uh, I think very much also thanks to uh, President Ursula von der Leyen, that is very committed to, to this as well. Uh, we have said that we will come up with a legislative proposal uh, against the violence against women, uh, later this year and we have also said that the Commission, the European Union, should ratify the Istanbul Convention which is also about violence towards girls and women. 
that is also another important topic that we see women's rights uh, yeah, not really being pushed forward, uh, more like um, in the other direction. Uh, I also, I'm, I'm a social media content creator and I receive online hate uh, on, a, on a daily basis. And I mean, I got my first smartphone when I was 16 and now young girls get their first smartphone, I don't know, when they're 10 or even younger or a little bit older. Um, how can we also help young girls to learn a more safe um, approach to go yeah. online? Yeah, this is actually one of the, gonna be one of the tasks for the new, new center that I would like to set up to how to help uh, child, uh, young girls and uh, to teachers and parents and others to, to help them how to be safe and how to, uh, to act. But let me also point out, it's not the responsibility for the young girl yeah. not to be a victim. Yes. <laughs> it's the responsibility for the perpetrator not to uh, offend or abuse her. And I think this is important. I spoke to one of those um, um, survivors uh, that been victim of, of, child, of uh, sexual abuse on first online and then in, in the real uh, world and, and she said well be realistic uh, we are talking about children or very young people and the perpetrators they have spent almost their whole life learning how to actually trick and lure people and they exchange you know information and, and tip tips to each other on how to do that. So yes, we should help uh, young people to be, be safe, young girls especially, but never say that it's your responsibility yes. or your fault. I think this is also important. And are you also communicating or talking to Meta or Google, for example, and trying to uh, really force them to change something? Yes, I was so th three weeks ago in the Silicon Valley. I met with uh, Meta from Facebook, uh, I met with Google, with uh, Microsoft, with TikTok, I met actually with uh, 11 companies <laughs> and then I went to Dublin also to, to meet with uh, both with Google there and, and also with um, um, Twitter that's based there. So I, I reached out to them because this is part of my preparation for also my, my legislation. And we need cooperation with the companies and we need a dialogue but I must also say we also need legislation because yes. voluntary to me, it's not enough. And I think that actually as a politician, uh, I think I'm obliged to use uh, the power I have to propose legislation when it comes to protecting girls and women. And um, also what I'd be a little more curious about is um, the whole, uh, let's say, I mean, the social media platforms are constantly changing and we mm -hmm. see that I think um, I have I spend so much time looking on screens and it probably won't get uh, less. How can we really um, find a secure environment in general? Also, what you said, if new platforms are coming up uh, and if it um, that the whole internet will be a more safe place. Also, um, what I think is um, an interesting approach. Now you often lock into your accounts with, let's say, Facebook or Instagram or Google. Is there, could there be any other approach how we kind of um, identify ourselves online that it's maybe a little more safe also to really find out who is um, who um, is, has to be in charge for a penalty when it comes to, let's yes, say, child abuse? Yes, I think abuse. this is really an interesting discussion. It's going on with the companies and I think that uh, if you ask me, I think this is something that we should look into because also when you have, for example, different regulation for uh, for children that, and adults, and that's I think it's proper to have. Mm -hmm. But who do? You, how can you know yeah. if you don't uh, identify yourself, or if they are doing? Uh, I mean, the companies today they they close their account, they take it down, but then they just start a new one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's I think really the the identity uh, uh, is really an, an an issue I think and. If you ask me, we are not, we are not, we are a little bit premature here, uh, and I think the whole online world, uh, of course, there's a lot of opportunities. I love yeah. all the opportunities, but we should not be naive. There are also a lot of opportunities for the criminals, uh, yes. both when it comes to us actually targeting and abusing uh, uh, children or, or women or hate speech, for example, but also when it comes to uh, hide. Uh, you know, corruption, yeah. drug uh, dealing, uh, murders, uh, these kind of things. So we have to have a proper balance here. And I think this is not, uh, this is a little bit 
premature yet. So I think in, reg in uh, legislation we need to do more here. And um, did some of the platforms already, let's say, confirm that uh, there will be some kind of filters or regulations um, when it comes to this um, sen sensitive content that they will uh, sh shut it down or that they will directly um, notice or inform somebody? Yes, uh, many companies are already uh, voluntarily uh, detecting, mm -hmm. reporting and removing. So that's why we have 30 million reports. Uh, I mean, it's terrible to think how much, yeah. how much content is there. Uh, and so they are doing that, but not all of them. So I would like to make it mandatory to do that. And also to address uh, now when uh, more and more communication is going end-to-end -end encryption, which is really great for many, in yeah. many aspects, but we could not say that this is a dark space where we don't, we don't care what's happening to children, for example, in this dark space. Mm -hmm. So this is also a discussion I have with the companies, how to detect, for example, before it's up, uh, being encrypted or after. You know, mm -hmm. it's when it, th these are techniques that they are using already, and I think we should use them to uh, protect, uh, especially children. So, are you also talking a little bit more about the, let's say, whole Web 3.0 uh, topic that's like currently going on? Because um, I also see this a lot, or I also hear, hear a lot about this when it comes to um, new currencies uh, that people invest some money and then they find out it's a scam. Mm. Uh, this is something that also often happens to uh, young people because they're yeah. not well informed. And these just technologies they just rise up so quickly so is this also something where you want more safety for uh, users yes. and we have actually just uh, uh, proposed from the commission that for example cryptocurrency should be seen like like other currency when it comes to money laundering uh, uh, or other kind of, of regulation for example uh, but I had to say of course my portfolio is uh, the, the criminal one so that means I always see the bad uh, part of technology of course there are also a lot of good parts so it's important that I work together with with my colleagues of course in, in the Commission but but for me it's really to, to see because I meet also with with the victims and they feel so um, powerless yeah. uh, and it's like an, an anonymous world out there uh, that they don't know how to uh, defend themselves or to uh, get things taken down or uh, I really think that I as a legislator have a, a responsibility here. And obviously it's also a huge mental health topic to yeah. all the victims. Is there anything the European Commission wants to uh, improve about this situation? Also so many uh, children that have been also uh, abused or um, that just feel lonely. I think mm -hmm. it's also really important that the European Commission thinks about the whole mental health topic a little bit more. Yeah, I agree. But I also have to say that this is a bit more difficult when it comes to legislation. Yeah. Because when we talk about child sexual abuse, it's a clear definition what is the child, and it's always illegal, no matter the, the context. But I had a long uh, the, the, the discussion with TikTok uh, when yeah. I was in Silicon Valley, uh, because they have this problem uh, on their platform uh, of, of young people being, you know, uh, radicalized, so to say, into uh, if they're already depressed, uh, they're already mm -hmm. thinking about, uh, you know, uh, this, harming this, themselves. Yes, harming yeah. themselves or things. Uh, and they are working on that. But I think, uh, so here I think we also need m more of a collaboration with the companies. It's not, it's not so easy to see exactly how you legislate here. Yeah. And also one thing that I'm always curious about is how the algorithms work. <laughs> Because I think it'd be really helpful to find out also what you said when people already feel depressed, that they feel even more depressed. Because obviously the algorithm just shows them really negative content yeah. and if we knew how the algorith uh, algorithms would work it'd be really really helpful to find that out also that we kind of step out of our social media bubbles and get different content and they are not so uh, eager to share that with us no. with other companies <laughs> because I have a uh, uh, I have an in EU internet forum where we meet regularly with with all the big uh, all the big companies and this about the algorithmic amplifiers uh, Uh, which we have d discussed this in this forum uh, actually several times, but they are really resistant here. So mm -hmm. I think also this is, uh, I think we need more transparency. Also yeah. This is part of it. Uh, and I think many people, uh, many ordinary citizens think that 
the technology they use is like a black box. Mm -hmm. We don't know what's happening to my uh, personal data or with my content and all that. Yeah. And I think actually they should be obliged to be more transparent on, on how they work. Yeah, also that it's not that addictive. I think there are already so many young um, people that are addicted to their smartphone, to social mm -hmm. media. Obviously, that's how these platforms work. Um, so I also always have to restrict myself a little bit, but I, I'm 26 and if mm -hmm. you're a teenager, it's it's not that easy, especially if you spend so much time at home. Mm -hmm. um, so um, it's a it's a great project what you're working on so can you um kind of top down like the let's say three next steps that you need to do and when can we uh finally let's say um notice a change like a legal change what will we see well then? uh in uh, four to six weeks i will okay. make a proposal uh to re that would be a tough one on child sexual abuse against the companies that what they need to do but also to propose a new european center to work on prevention and the support of the victims of child sexual abuse. Uh, I will uh, later uh, this year propose changes in the legislation on trafficking in human beings. Uh, today uh, it's um, optional for member states if they would like to criminalize the use of services of a trafficked person. It's uh, mandatory to criminalize if you employed a person uh, uh, um, a person that is a victim of trafficking, but if you use the service and prostitution, these girls, you don't employ them, you use her body yeah. Yeah, again and again and again. This should be criminalized all over the European Union. So this is what I would like to propose later this year. And we want also to come up with a proposal to uh, legislation when it comes to fight uh, domestic viol violence against uh, girls and women later this year. That sounds like a, a lot of things you have to do, but I'm, I'm, it's uh, really impressive because I know it's such an important topic and I, I receive so many messages also from young girls that um, receive online hate or even, even worse. And um, I think it's really time that the European Union starts to do something against this. Yes. Thank you. You know, I have this necklace. And that means I have to fight for women's rights all the time. Yes. <laughs> We all have to. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.